Hello and welcome to the first ever edition of the Hungarian NB2 podcast, where we aim to bring you coverage of what we like to call the best wee league in the world. We'll kick off our debut show with an overview of the league and a run through of the current standings before diving into our match day 24 preview. So the NB2 is the second division of Hungarian football, sandwiched in between the NB1 at the top level and NB3, which is obviously the third level of the game in Hungary. The NB3 split into three divisions of East, West and Centre. The NB2 comprises of 20 clubs at the moment. The top two at the end of the season promoted to NB1 and the bottom three going into each, going into one of the three sections of NB3. So the current 20 sides that are in NB2 at the moment are DVTK, who topped the table in 49 points, Vashash, her second on 46, Cage Commit, her third on 44, Seged on 42 points, Sambadhai Haladash on 41 points, Nirikaza Spartakus on 36 points, Sheofolk also on 36 points, Page, who are 8th on 33 points, alongside Gjur. 10th place Dorog on 31 points, St. Lawrence in 11th on 27 points, Bakish Chaba on 25 points, Aika, Shorogshar, and Buddha Orsh, who are all on 24 points. In 16th place, it's Chakfar on 23 points, Solnok take up 17th spot on 22 points. And in the bottom three spots at the moment, occupied by Harmadik Keralet on 22 points, Tisa Kedsk on 21, and Buddha Folk, who are 20th on 20 points. At the start of the season, DVTK and Vashash would have been the pre-season favourites and they currently do occupy the top two spots and look most likely to be the sides who will be promoted to the end of the year. Uh, third place Cage Commit, however, have really been the surprise club of the season so far. They came up from NB3 last season, but interestingly did not win their section of NB3. They actually came second. I think it was uh, Ivancha who were the club who won their section, but could not meet the criteria to take up their spot in NB2. So it fell to Cage Commit as runners up. Um, to actually take the, the place in NB2 and, and take the, the promotion. They were probably pre-season favourites for relegation, but so far have really exceeded all expectations, currently sit third place in the table and are only five points off the top and two off uh, Vashash in second place. So still very much in the promotion hunt going into the final games of the season. At the bottom end of the table though, it's, uh, it's kind of the, the opposite story, in a way, for Buddha folk, as they came down from NB1 last season with uh, big expectations that they would be challenging for promotion this season, and they obviously find themselves rooted to the foot of the table at the moment after 23 games. Just the four wins, 11 defeats, scoring less than a goal a game, um, and... <coughs> excuse me look like they might actually follow in the footsteps of Kaposhva and do the kind of unwanted double relegation from NB1 down to NB2 and then NB2 to NB3 in consecutive seasons. So it's not looking very good for them. So looking forward to match day 24, which is why we're here for this podcast to try and uh, kind of generate a bit more interest in the Hungarian NB2. We've got 10 fixtures over the weekend, nine of which will take place on Sunday, 20th, uh, 20th of February, and one fixture on the Monday. So Sunday's games um, Sunday's games are Buddha Orsh versus Nirekaza, Ndorog against Buddha Folk, Shorog Shar against Dior, St. Lawrence against Bekish Chaba, Tisa Ketsch against Seged, then at 5 o'clock, we've got Aika versus Page, Chakfar versus Kedjkamet, DVTK against Solnok, and Holodash against Harmadik Keralet. On the Monday night at 8 pm, it's Vashash against Shiofok to round off the weekend of football. 
So we'll take a kind of quick look at each one of those matches. First up, Buddha Orsh against Nira Kaza. So Buddha Orsh are going into this game with the excuse me the unwanted title of um, being the the worst home side in NB2 so far this season. They've played at home 11 times, picking up just nine points and winning on only two occasions. For them, their problem throughout the season, both home and away, has been a lack of goals. They don't really have a real focal point up front in attack and have really struggled for goals this season. Checking out uh, their stats for the season, Buddha Folk have uh, sorry Buddha Orsh rather have scored twenty five goals in the twenty three games. So it's a real been a real struggle for them in front of goal this season. In fact, the top goal scorer is the midfielder Mark Petnehazi, who has scored five times this season, all of which have come from the spot. So I think again that kind of highlights for them the main issues that they've had have been with <coughs> excuse me creating and then taking chances from open play. Their opponents on Sunday Nirek has a are enjoying a revival of sorts at the start of 2022 uh, under new coach Tamás Fitzko. So they had a really difficult end to 2021. They started the season very positively. They uh, were actually top of the table for a spell at the start of the campaign and then fell away uh, during kind of September, October and into November. They've picked up form since the return uh, since the turn of the year and their return after the winter break, having won all three fixtures so far, uh, conceding just once in those three games, and also managed to pick up an impressive away win at Holladash. Uh, impressive as Holladash rarely lose at home, and have conceded uh, in their 23 games this season, conceded just 16 times, which gives them the best defence in the league. Nirikaza went there and won 2-1 after losing an early goal. So big improvements from them uh, at the start of this year. However, prior to the, the start of the year, into last year, uh, Nirikaza had actually gone seven games without a win away from home. But as we say, as I say, their uptick in form at the start of this year really kind of negates that, compensates for that. Um, and they would certainly be the favourites, I think, going into this match against Buddha Orsh. <coughs> Excuse me, apologies for the coughs through this. Uh, Dorog against Buddha Folk are next, is next up. So, Dorog went to this game off the back of a defeat last weekend away at Seged. And they'll be looking to bounce back, obviously, and pick up the three points at home to Buddha Folk. And will be favourites to do so. Dorog have got a pretty good record at home this season. They've lost just one of their last five home matches uh, and are a bit of a force to be reckoned with uh, in their, their home ground. Buddha folk, on the other hand, as we mentioned kind of at the top of the show, currently bottom of the table uh, and also bottom of the away table as well. They've picked up just six points on the road this season for those points coming from one win and three draws. So... Really not a good season all round so far for Buddha Folk. Uh, one positive from them, however, is the fact that last weekend at home they did manage to pick up a draw against Vashash in kind of a Budapest derby. So as much as that was potentially that the Vashash misfiring and not being at their best, it would be a good bit of a confidence boost for Buddha Folk going into the, this match. Um, you know, that they didn't actually take a hiding against Vashash as was expected. That said, their away form has been pretty dreadful. They did lose one of their top players, Irvig Farkash, to Vashash during the, the winter transfer window. Uh, and to be perfectly honest with you, I just cannot see Buddha Folk getting the result in this match. Uh, which probably means they're going to prove me wrong and win. Uh, but no, for me, it looks like that would be a Almost a nailed on victory for Dorog. Third match of the weekend to look at Shorokshar versus Jir. So, Shorokshar currently 14th in the table, uh, Jir are 9th. Shorokshar have been, you know, despite being 14th in the table, are one of those sides that you can't take your eye off this season. And that's mainly because 
when they play, you're pretty much guaranteed goals. Uh, in their 23 matches so far this season, there's been a league high of 79, go yeah, 79 goals scored across those games. That's a kind of an average of 3.4 goals per game that Shorak Shah have been involved in this season. At home, in their 12 matches, there's been 36 goals. So we're averaging three goals there. This would be a game to watch, to keep an eye on for goals. Um, do I expect Shurik Shah to win it? Probably not, as Dior are the side who've got the uh, the best away record in the league. Uh, it's sitting ninth in the table. They've actually picked up 20 points on the road this season, which is the same as DBT Car. However, they've done it in, in 11 games, whereas DBT Car have done it in 12. So they've picked up say, 20 points on the road. They've uh, and they got 33 points in total. So they're actually one of those rare sides who are better on the road than they are at home. They're not as flamboyant a team as Shurakshire, but I think their kind of more compact approach should see them through in this game. They'll go, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Shurakshire will kind of force them, I think, to open up a little bit or certainly take the game to them. Um, looking to score, but you're fairly solid at the back and uh, efficient going forward. So I would see there being goals in this game um, and you're to come out on top. Next game on the list, St. Lawrence against Bakish Chaba. One of the most interesting games, I think, of this match day 24, um, as Shurikshar, uh, sorry, St. Lawrence are 11th in the table with Bakish Chaba just two points and one place behind them in 12th. So this is a proper kind of mid-table battle royale between these two sides. And they're very evenly matched. If you look at their statistics across the season, uh, you know, in terms of wins and draws, it's, it's very even. St. Lawrence, slightly better away form, which has, has given them two more points. Um, than than Bakish Chaver, who had a poor start to the season, but again around about kind of November December time really did start to pick up their results and performances, uh, getting a bit more of the rub of the green, which they perhaps weren't getting earlier on in the season, so that's, which has seen them rise up to twelfth. Uh, but both these sides are very evenly matched, as I say. Uh, St. Lawrence have won their last two games at home, so I think. That will give them the confidence going into this game that they're beginning to kind of re-establish themselves at home as a, as a as I said it's difficult to beat there. Um, lost narrowly to Nire Kaza last Sunday away from home, which was probably a result to be expected given Nire Kaza's resurgence in the start of the year. Bakish Chaba again, I think we'll go into the game with a positive state of mind. Um, they know that they've got the ability to score on the road. Um, only Vashash, Kejkamet and Shurak Shah have scored more goals away from home this season. So I think they'll they'll take this uh, going to this game with kind of no fear, really, believing that they've got the ability to take points uh, from the match and uh, <coughs> excuse me, then ultimately try and leapfrog St. Lawrence and take that 11th spot in the table. Tisaketsk versus Seged is next up. Tisaketsk, one of the sides who came up from NB3 last season, um, currently sitting 19th in the table and really kind of fighting for their survival in NB2, but they're going about it in the right way. Um, they had a slow adjustment period, I would say, at the start of the season where they weren't really picking up points. They've lost 14 matches this season. Uh, which is the most of any club in the division. And for a while, it really did look as though they were doomed to, to relegation. However, as with several sides in the league, really, they, their form picked up towards the end of last year. Uh, they've now won four of their last five home fixtures. They've won three of their last five games combined home and away. And they're one of the form sides in the league despite sitting down in kind of lowly 19th position. Um, they won last weekend away to Hormadik Kerelet in kind of a, a relegation six-pointer, really. 
pulled them off the bottom of the table. <coughs> excuse me, and to within one point of Harmony Kerelet in an eighteenth and one point from Sulnock in seventeenth. So they've almost got themselves out of the relegation zone, which earlier on in the season looked like uh, looked like it would be something too far for them. Uh, tomorrow's visitors. Seged, however, will be will be a, a different proposition to to Harmadi Kiralet. Seged are currently fourth in the table. They are one of the strongest sides in the league. Uh, they've won twelve matches so far this season. They're only four points off a uh, promotion spot, so four points behind Vashash in second place. Um, They've uh, they're on a very good run of form away from home. They're without defeat in the last five away games, and as I say, they they maintain those hopes of getting into the promotion spots. And this is a game that they'll be looking at to think that they can get the three points from and really boost those promotion ambitions of theirs. They're also led up front by uh, Christopher Horvath, who's a young 19, 20 year old forward who's on loan from Torino's Primavera side. Uh, he looks a really good prospect and scored. Quite a few goals this season already, so this is a, this is the makings of being again another in, intriguing match. You've got a side at the bottom end of the table who are performing well, uh, kind of who've got at least mid-table level form at the moment against the side going for promotion. So a very interesting game that could go either way. Taking a look at the five pm games, the previous. Matches all being two o'clock kickoffs tomorrow. <coughs> uh, excuse me again. Apologies for the coffin through this. Um, so the first game at five o'clock is Ica against Page. Ica are on a really poor run of form at the moment. They've lost all three games uh, since the return after the winter break, and they're now actually on, on a run of eight games without a win in the league, and currently sit in thirteenth position. One of those sides who, at the start of the season, probably didn't have any real um, or any real hopes of promotion. Certainly not a side that you would have thought would have been in a relegation fight. However, the form at the moment suggests that they may very well be dragged into a relegation dogfight if they can't start getting getting wins on the board uh, in the near future. Uh, as I say, thirteenth position, but only three points above Harmadi Keralit who occupy 18th. So if results, as I say, continue to go against them, they could very quickly be really pulled into a relegation fight that they don't want to be involved in. Um, Page, who are the visitors, currently 8th in the table, had a slow start to the season, um, but rediscovered form from last season uh, towards the end of 21. Last season, Page had come up from NB3 and were kind of doing the doing what Cage Commit are doing this season. They were outperforming um, everyone's expectations and for a long time had a real uh, shot at promotion up to NB1. They fell away towards the end of last season and that end of season form continued into the start of this season. However, they're now kind of rediscovered that defensive solidity that was a uh, key for them last year. Um, they conceded just 24 goals in 23 games now, scored only 29, so it's it's more a case of them. They're, uh, they're tight defensively. You know the old one of 1-0 to the Arsenal, well it's 1-0 to the pitch. That's their method of, of, of trying to win games, score first, defend and uh, and see the game out. Which is kind of what I would expect them to do tomorrow uh, away to Ica. Uh, Page go into this game having lost just one of the last five games away from home, and that defensive solidity I think can see them through tomorrow um, to at least a draw, if not the, the full three points. Chakvar against Kijkamit is another one of the five o'clock kickoffs. So Chakfar are currently in 16th position in the table, um, one point above the relegation zone and have lost the two previous matches against Vashash and Shiofok. Vashash beat them 4-1 at home, 
for Chagfar and then away to Shield Folk. It was a 2 0 defeat. Uh, in both games, Chagfar were very poor, rarely looked like threatening, um, and, and really missed Damash Takac, who is the league's top goal scorer this season and, and plays for Chagfar. So, yeah, they're kind of towards the bottom of the table. Scored 31 goals. I think Takac has got 15 of them, so he's got almost 50% of their goals this season. And he's been a real mess in the games that he's been out. Without him, they really do look toothless. Uh, and like they, they, they offer very little going forward. <coughs> Cage Commit, who are the visitors, uh, a team that you know, we've mentioned a few times already throughout this kind of podcast. And they've been they've been the surprise team of the season coming up from NB3 with very little expectation on them to do anything this season. They bought well in the summer, signed a few players from NB1, uh, including Daniel Lukac, who for a long time was top goal scorer in the NB2 this season. Scored four goals in a match against Shorokshar earlier on in the campaign. They've been a revelation really, this season, what's kind of driven them on to their lofty position is, is a kind of never-say-die attitude and spirit that they've got. They seem to score quite a lot of late goals to win games or secure draws from a losing position. Um, and they almost did it on Monday night. They played in the big Monday night match against DVTK, lost 3-2, but scored late on to pull it back to 3-2 uh, as, as they, as I say, kind of just pressed for goals late on in that game, didn't want to lose, didn't want to give in. But DVT Car are and were just that class above throughout the game, deservedly left with the three points. Um, but I think tomorrow, playing against a lesser opposition in Chakvar, Cage Commit should be favourites to go and win that game and, and maintain their uh, surprise push for a, a double promotion. They're also uh, had excellent form on the road of late. They've won the last four matches away from home. Um, they actually played four games in a row away from home fairly recently. Won them all. Uh, and obviously be looking now for a, a fifth successive win. Uh, and really would not count that out for them. Next game up is DVT Car against Solnok. So as we mentioned just a few minutes ago there, DVT Car beat Cage Commit on Monday night in one of the kind of top of the table clashes. It was first versus third. A huge win for DVT Car, very important win for them because it allowed them to stretch the lead at the top of the table over Vashash to three points capitalising on their inability to beat Budafok on the Sunday uh, and also allowed DVT Cat to stretch the lead over Cage Commit to five points. So they're the pre-season favourites. They do currently top the table. Been very consistent throughout the campaign. They've won 14 of the 23 games. They've only lost twice so far this campaign. They've scored 42 goals, which is the most of any club in the division. Um, pretty much deserving to be top of the table where they are. Uh, looking for that kind of instant return to the top flight. Uh, the form over the last five games or so, looking at current form, has been almost impeccable. They've dropped just two points in the last five games and they've won each of their last five home matches. So... I really don't see there being much hope for Solnok coming into this game uh, of, of pulling out a surprise result. Uh, Solnok won last weekend against Aika, but that was their first win in 14 matches. So they'd lost or drawn the last the, the previous 13 games, uh, which had seen them fall from, I think, a high of around fourth or fifth in the table in the earlier weeks. Uh, all the way down to now 17th place in the table where they sit. So, fantastic for them to win last week against IKEA. It stops that free fall of results. Um, 
but I can't see them making it two in a row against AVT Car. I think the, the side from Mishkolds will prove themselves to be too strong once again, take another three points and another step towards that instant return back to, uh, to NB1. And the final game of the uh, the <coughs> excuse me final game of the card for Sunday is Holladash against Hormadik Keralet. So Holladash going to this game in fifth place in the table, and Hormadik Keralet are down in eighteenth in the relegation zone. On the face of it. This would appear to be a fairly straightforward victory, you would think, for Holladash, given the the large disparity in league positions between the two clubs. However, I think this is one of those games that might end up being a bit closer than it, it looks at, at first glance. Holladash have had fairly patchy form of late. So despite saying earlier on, you know, that they're a difficult side to beat at home, and I think that does remain true. Uh, they've actually you know, lost three of the last five home games, so a little bit contradictory there, I guess. But certainly earlier on in the season, the home form had been very strong. Uh, the defeats that they've had have been narrow defeats. So I do still think that they're a very strong side at home, but the form of late hasn't been particularly great. They've kind of struggled a little bit coming back after the winter break, uh, but still have the best defence the best defensive record in the league, as I say, 16 goals against in 23 games. An issue for them previously, and it still remains to a degree, has been a lack of goals up front, um, 27 goals in the 23 games. But they do have a, a very impressive young forward called Milan Toth leading the line. Um, so they'll be looking to him, I think, in this game to 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 uh, to spark a victory for them to get the goals it's going to win this game. Harmadik Keralet also quite patchy recent form as you would expect for a side that's sitting at the bottom of the table or towards the bottom of the table but over the last five games they do actually outperform Holodash uh, with two wins and a draw in the last five games. Um, so Uh, you know, form-wise, I think I think Kerala are doing fairly well recently. We actually have done a kind of projected table of the season and based on least recent form, and they should end up finishing. I think it's around about thirteenth or fourteenth in the table because of late they haven't been losing as many games. They've been picking up draws. They've been getting the odd win here or there, um, and away from home, as I say, they've they've been picking up results. Whether they can do it against Haladash, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think this game has the potential, certainly, to be a closer game than it initially looks to be. Again, that said, Haladash should come out on top. And the final game of the weekend will take place on Monday night, where Vashash take on Shiofolk. Uh, if memory serves right, this game was a draw in the earlier on in the season when it was played at Sheofolk, I think it was 2-all. Um, Sheofolk are uh, one of those sides that, are, again, are actually quite difficult to beat. They've drawn nine of the 23 games, they've won nine, they've lost only five. They are a kind of stodgy side, uh, difficult to break down on occasions, and that's been a problem for Vashash recently. So they've got a very strong team. Arguably the best squad in the division. There's quite a few players that have got NB1 experience. They've got the hero of NB2, uh, Adam Balaiti, in the squad, although he doesn't get a game for them for some reason because Attila Kutov prefers pretty much any other forward at his, at his disposal over Balaiti, which is ridiculous considering his output over the last few seasons. That aside, uh, Vashash are a very strong side. They should hopefully be, you know, out to prove a point after their fairly lame performance against Budafok in the derby match last weekend. At home, 
don't lose very often. They they do tend to score a lot of goals playing their kind of attacking four three three system. I would suspect Vashash will go on and win that game against Shield Folk on Monday night. Uh, but again, I think this is another game that has the potential to be a lot closer than you may think, given the, the kind of on paper disparity in quality between the two sides. So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, Vashash probably favourites to win that game. Uh, and then they need to win it if they want to keep up their aspirations of winning the title, not just getting promotion, but I think they'll actually want to win the title this season. After kind of narrowly losing out on promotion last year, they'll want to go in and win the thing this year. Um, and and they, and they should do. They should certainly win this game uh, against Shio folk, but it, it remains to be seen. So there we have it. This is the first attempt to do a podcast on NB2. Quite a lot of rambling through this. I hope it has been interesting. I hope you found it worthwhile. We'll look to refine the process as we go on. Um, but yeah, stick with NB2. It's the best league in the world. Follow us at the Hungry NB2 on Twitter, uh, where you don't have to listen to the rambles. You can just read our tweets, which are a lot more interesting than this. But, you know, thank you very much.